everybody. My name is Hal. This is Quail Studios Guitar. And today we're going to talk about memorizing music. And uh, this is also for Lee, uh, one of my students, Lee. He's uh, having some trouble memorizing music. I see a, uh, a comment here. Haroguk says, everybody, what was the first song you memorized? <coughs> That's such a good question. I'll tell you what my first song was. I think it was Blowing in the Wind. Uh, isn't that by Bob Dylan? Uh, you know. Mm, how many times must a man walk down? Da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. Anyway, um, so how is it that we memorize music? Hello, hello. Uh, how is it that we memorize music? That's what we're going to talk about today. How do you go about memorizing music? Haruguk, Haruguk says, I can honestly say I have not ever men memorized one meaning song well enough to play. Well, you know, it's, uh, and Fuser Tomas. Hi, how are you doing? It's good to see you. Hello, Shadow Hunter. Hello, it's good to see you. All right, that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, I've chosen Peaceful Easy Feeling because, uh, because my student um, was playing this one and he was telling me that he was having trouble getting away from uh, the app musician, being able to play without that particular app. And uh, if you've never checked out the app, now I'm not, I don't really care about musician. Uh, musician. Um, I've heard about it, I've seen it, I've uh, see, seen how it works and that kind of thing. Um, I think those kinds of apps can be really, really uh, beneficial to help you to understand chords and kind of walk you through different kinds of things. There are a lot of different courses out there by a lot of different people. Good morning, Bob. It's good to see you. Um, so I, I'm not down on musician or anything like that, um, but there's a point where you have to break away from the music or from the guide. And the same thing happens when, you're, when you've got music. Let's see if I got any music. I was just... Uh, you know, I, I use music all the time. Like, here's Recuerdos de la Alhambra. Uh, and it's uh, a piece by Francisco Tarrega. It's a, it's a classical guitar piece. And I'm working on it. Um, but there's, there's a point where you have to uh, get out of the music itself and uh, play um, just by um, remembering what the chords are and that kind of thing. You know, I use notes when I play live, especially when I'm doing like uh, a two hour, you know, uh, concert, it's not really a concert, but sometimes uh, like at, uh, at restaurants and things like that, I've done entertainment and I'll take, you know, a couple of books with 150 songs in them. And I don't have all 150 songs memorized, honestly, but they're lead sheets. In fact, let me, let me go grab one of my lead sheets over here. Here's one of my books right here. Had to go off camera to get it. So here's a book. You know, it's a three-ring binder. Uh, here's This Masquerade. So uh, this is by uh, George Benson. Uh, it was written by Leon Russell. George Benson did it. The Carpenters did it. Um, I love that song. It's a really great song. Um, Mary Jane's Last Dance, you know. Jimmy Buffett, Margaritaville, that's a really easy song. But I'm going to talk today about uh, Peaceful Easy Feeling. So let's do that. So I use, I use notes all the time. And this gives me the lyrics, it gives me the chords, it tells me where to play, but it doesn't tell me what to play, and I'm not reading the music. I'm just looking at it as a, um, as a reminder to tell me, okay, this is what you do next. So... In the description of this video, there is a link to the exact lead sheet that I'm going to use from um, Ultimate Guitar. And I chose this one because uh, it's the closest one that I could find. It's version 2. Uh, it's pretty close. You know, as I was actually listening to the song, um, today was the first time I actually really listened to the song and started to figure it out and that kind of thing. And I know that there are a few um, small things that are different from the actual recording 
and from the way they played it live in 1974. Uh, and also, in the description of this video, there is a link to a live version, and I, I looked at that one. It's wonderful. I really like it. Um, anyway, it's, it's a, a television version, but it's really good. Um, all right, so it starts out with an E chord. I'm going a little too fast. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Where did you wake up this morning? You don't have to write it in the comments, but I wanted you to think about it. Where did I wake up this morning? Most people say, in my bed. What I'm getting at is you woke up at home, in your bed, at home. Okay, if you were at home. And uh, where are you going to go today? Are you going to go out and do anything? Are you going to go to work? Okay, are you going to go to the store? Are you just going to go outside? Uh, what are you going to do today? Are you going to go visit somebody? Are you going to go visit your friend of yours or some family? Um... Uh, and once you go somewhere, let's just say you're going to go to work. So you go to work. Let's say it's a mile away. And you work there for a while. And then you decide to come home for lunch. So you get back in your car or on your bicycle or whatever it is, and you come back home for lunch. Okay? And then you go back to work. And then you come back home when you're done with your day. It's like, okay, I'm done. <clears throat> and then you decide, oh, I forgot something. So you went back to work. And then you, you picked up something that you forgot at work. And then you decided, okay, I'm going to go to the store and get some milk. So you go to the store, and then you come back home. Now, music is exactly like this. This E chord is what we call the home chord, okay? Because this song is in the key of E. <coughs> What's nice about this is that right there at the beginning of the song, they get us really grounded in the key of E, in the E chord. So we know we're in the key of E. Now, just like when I talked about going to work and then coming back home, the same thing happens with songs. They leave, I mean, if it just sat there and the whole song was this. Now, this is an E chord going to an E sus4. To E, it's basically just the same chord. Okay? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. And at the beginning of this song, if you listen to the recording, it does this eight times. And that gives us a clue about how many chords we're going to have and phrases and that kind of thing. Okay? There's a lot of things that are set up in an introduction, especially this one. So, it goes somewhere. It's not just static. It just doesn't sit in one place. It has to go somewhere, otherwise it's totally uninteresting. So in this song, so when the verse starts, and if I start singing this, they're going to call me out on it. I like the way your sparkling earrings lay right? against your skin so brown. Now what I did there, it starts with an E, goes to an A. Now what's interesting about E and A is those are the first, those are the low notes on our guitar. The low one is E, and the next one is A, right? E, A, E, A. Now, in my book, there's a chord chart in the back, and it's got uh, the uh, first position chords that I think you should learn. There's like 16 of them. These are very, very important because we use these shapes all the time up the neck, and we use them all over the guitar. But they're also very, very important when you play songs, especially in this song. Okay, so an E and an A, they're right across from each other. Here's your E, and here's your A, just like that. So now, how far is it from E to A in the musical scale? If we start on E and go E, F, G, A, that's four. It's what we call a perfect fourth away. E is a perfect fourth away from A. 
e up to a is a perfect fourth. Now, in the scale, it's actually e, f sharp, g sharp, a, but I'm not going to worry about the sharps right now. So um, it's a fourth. So when you go across like this, now remember we talked about that little story? You're at home, and then you go to work, and then you go back home, and then you go to work, and you go back home, right? Okay, so let's pretend that e is home and A is work. And think about this this story in your mind, okay? La, la, da, la, la. Go back home, go back to work. Go back home, go back to work. Remember we hit, talked about going to work, picking something up because we forgot something there, and then going to the store. Let's go to the B7. Now, there's a couple ways to play B7. You can play it like this, right, as a bar chord, or you can play it like this, as an open position chord. Okay? Now, it's interesting because E to B is actually a fifth. E, F, G, A, B, right? So, one, or home, is E, four is A, and five is B. All right? So, it starts out on this song. One, four... Now, you know, when I first started playing guitar, I have to say I didn't think about it as one to four. I just thought about it as the shape, where it is on my guitar, right? As there, I'm on the low strings, I'm playing that low E string as my bass note. And then when I play the A chord, I'm playing the, uh, the A string as my bass note, so it went over like that. Open to open, right? And back. And back. Back home. Back to A. And then what happens is that that A chord, if you use it as a bar chord, it goes up two frets. One, two. And then you have to bar the open strings. Right? And there's your B chord. So it moves up two frets. Right? Open to two. That's your bass note. Now if you do it as a B7... Looks like that. Looks like an A7, up two frets. Or if you do, like I said, the B7 open position chord, your bass note is still on the second fret right there. Okay. So this is the pattern that we're doing. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about the form of the song. Let me pull it up here so I can look at it. I made a couple of notes so I don't forget. So there's an introduction. And it just does this, E to E sus4. So we're just sitting on E. And then we go to the verse, E, A, E, A, E, A, B7, B7. Now that was eight chords, E, A, E, A, E, A, B7, B7. And then we do it all over again. E, A, E, same thing. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, B7, B7. And then we go into the chorus. So we got an intro, an introduction. We got a verse, which is two phrases of eight chords, you know, eight and eight. And then we go into the chorus, and we have this section of eight chords, but it doesn't go to E, it goes to A first. There's a peaceful, easy feeling, right? So what you do is you play A twice, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, back to E, two, three, four. We're still doing that, that A to E, but now it's a, the opposite, A first, twice and then E twice and then A twice again and then it does an F sharp minor now in Glenn Frey played it like this like that played a really cool chord I don't remember the name of that one but uh, it's like uh, let's see it's these two notes come up to that fourth uh, fret and then this one is on the is on the uh, second fret on the G string. And then your E and your B are open, like that. It's a really cool chord. I like to put my thumb over the top 
and get an F sharp. That's the second fret there. That's the F sharp. Now what happens here is that we've got open to F sharp. You could do it like this, like a bar chord like that. Uh, and so you'd have that A chord going to F sharp, going to B7. Okay. Now what's interesting is that the F sharp is actually the second note in the scale. E, F sharp. Remember I did that before. I kind of ignored the sharp. But E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B. So what we've got is, uh, let's go back. So the chorus, we've got two A's, two E's, two A's, F sharp, B7. And it's all right there. It's all right there in a little box, <laughs> right? Your F sharp is in the second fret. Your B is on the second fret. Or the open position chord. And then you've got four more chords at the end of uh, that chorus. And that's it. Because I'm already standing. E up to F sharp, and then over to A, up to B7, which is really interesting. E, F sharp, A, B. So it's like playing an open to two, open to two. Those are your bass notes. Open, two, open, two. Now why am I saying that? It's because I'm talking, I'm calling out the bass notes of these chords. You've really got to know your chords. You've got to know the bass notes. These are the root notes. Okay. E, you've got your open E. F sharp, second fret. A, open. B, second fret. Right? It's very simple. And then we go back to something like an intro. They, uh, on the, the lead sheet, they call it a um, an interlude. Okay, a musical interlude. And it says it does this. It goes to E to E sus4, and that's it. In the actual recording, it's a little different than that. I'm not going to go into that right now uh, because they do a little bit of a variation on that idea. And then it goes into verse 2, and we do the same thing we did in the first verse. You've got, you know, those uh, eight chords, E, A, E, A, E, A, B7, B7. Then you do it again, E, A, E, A, B7, sorry, E, A, E, A, E, A, B7, B7. Then you go into the chorus, right? A, A, E, E, A, A, F sharp minor, B7. Actually, uh, there's a variation on that, too, in the live version. And uh, then it goes E, F sharp minor, A, B7. And then we're into the lead or the instrumental section. And guess what? The instrumental section is exactly like the verse and the chorus. The chords are exactly the same. So you don't have to learn a whole new set of chords. You basically just play the same thing. And then who's ever playing the lead or whatever you're doing, you know. I noticed that in the original recording there's this really low uh, bass. You know, it's like a guitar part that's kind of playing the melody sort of it's like a variation on the melody it's really cool i really like it um okay so the instrumental version is just the verse and the chorus then we go back to a verse now there's no interlude between that interlude uh, uh, that instrumental chorus it just goes right into i get this feeling i may know you or whatever the words are i mean and the, and the melody I haven't studied it enough to really sing it, but I, I will. Someday I'll, I'll probably teach this really well, put it in my book. Okay, and uh, so you got another verse. It's the same thing as it was before. You got another chorus, and then you've got a tag on the end. And remember how they had those four... chords right at the end of the chorus? Well, that's what the tag is. It does it like three times. Oops. E, F sharp minor, A, B7, then does it again. It's like a loop. It just goes around and around. E, F sharp minor, A, B7, E, F 
sharp minor, A, B7, B7, F sharp minor, just like that. On the ground, or whatever it is that they do there. And they end on an E chord, which is your home chord. And that's where you end up at nighttime and go to sleep. All right? So <clears throat> I suggest that you think about you know, your E chord, we're going to go back to E a lot because it's the home chord. We always go back home. Then we always go to A, back and forth, back and forth. Right? And then we go to that B7, which is actually called a dominant. Dominant 7, 5. And that dominant B7 goes back to E. It does that many times. Um, anyway. So that's basically the, the whole thing. According to the lead sheet at, uh, at Ultimate Guitar, there's a couple of different things that I love about their uh, actual recording and the live recording that they did. <clears throat> um, there's a couple of nuances that are a little different. There's something called a turnaround that they do uh, in the second after the first verse uh, into the interlude going into the verse two, but we're not going to talk about that right now. But if you just want to play it very simply, that's that's the way to, what to do. So really, there's only four chords in the whole song, mostly E, A, and B7, and then F sharp minor, either like that or like this, right? And you just have to order your mind to be able to think of it that way. Okay. So that's that's how you memorize music. Let's see if I've got any... Uh, I can make B7 chord properly very, very good. Oh, you can't make the B7 chord. You know what, Shadowhunter? The reason you can't do it, probably, is because you're positioning. You've got to get your positioning in the right place. Orion Quest says hi. Hello! Oh, yeah. Remember to hit the like and subscribe button. <laughs> Only subscribe if you want to. You don't have to subscribe. I don't want, you, I don't want you to subscribe to my channel if you're not really interested. Uh, but if you like my content, please subscribe and hit the like button for me. There you go. Thanks very much. Uh, that B7 chord, Shadow Hunter. <coughs> That B7 chord is a little tricky. You've got to have the right positioning on your hand, and you've got to get your guitar in the right position here. A lot of times, and I, I work with people all the time that have their guitar in the wrong position, and they're like, I can't do that. I was with a, a boy last night, and we were working on Dust in the Wind. And there was a, a chord, an A minor chord. A minor chord with a G bass, right? And he's like, oh, yeah, do it. Well, he had his guitar way out too far and uh, too low, and it wasn't in the right position, and he couldn't do it because he had his hand in the wrong place. It's very important that you move your hand around, move your guitar around. That's what's so nice about having a guitar. <clears throat> the piano doesn't move. You can't really move the piano. You have to move yourself around. But the guitar... You can put the, uh, the neck closer to your face. You can bring it back. You can bring it out. You can bring it this way. You can bring it that way, depending on what you need to do. So my B7, um, I'm actually, well, here I'm facing the camera, but this is at about a 45 degree angle. And you got to make sure you're playing the right fingers. Okay. I think we're about done. Thanks very much for being here. Bob Schumann says, try playing it in D. Yes, that's another option, Bob. Um, when we're, when you go to, uh, when you go to uh, Ultimate Guitar, the first version, not the official version that you pay for, but the first version, which has 4,781, you know, likes or there's a whole bunch of people that love it. It's in the key of D, and they put a capo on the second fret, right? Like this. Mm -hmm. 
right? That's a great way to do it. I love doing stuff like that. Um, the reason I actually talked about doing it in the key of E is because Lee was playing it in the key of E. So he was trying to work it out in the key of E. That's version two uh, at Ultimate Guitar, which is a good version. And version three is in the key of E, I believe. Let's, let's look at it. Yeah, it's in the key of E also. It's a little bit different. It's actually closer in some respects to uh, the actual performance because it's got a B sus4 going to a B in the chorus, which I like a lot because they actually do that with their voices. And then version four is in the key of G. Um, I'm looking at it for a minute. And so you can do it in different different uh, places, and it's okay. It's all right. You don't have to do it in the key of E, right? You can do it in D with a capo. You can do it without a capo. You can do it in the key of G. Yeah, any of those work. Yep, if you understand how to, uh, to change uh, your key to fit your voice, a lot of times you have to do that kind of stuff. All right, thanks for being here. Now, for those of you who want to hang out with me, I'm going to go hang out with my supporters here in just a moment. And uh, look in the description of the video. You'll find links to how to do that. I appreciate all of you. One of the reasons I do a live stream every week now is that um, I used to have people say, you know, can you uh, video the hangout and then put it up? Well, that's a big... That's, that's more work. <laughs> so I just decided to do a live stream and talk about what I would, I'm thinking about talking about during the Hangout. Sometimes we don't talk about that in the Hangout. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we visit it more after, and sometimes we don't. But at least there's something that people that can't come to my Hangouts, maybe they're working or they're, it's too early or late in the evening for them, wherever they are in the world, they can listen to my live streams and uh, get some ideas about what's going on. All right, thanks a lot for being here. Haroguk, thank you for being here. Shadow Hunter, appreciate you being here. Ryan Quest, thanks for being here. Bob, thank you very much for being here. And Lee, if you're out there, you didn't make a didn't make a comment. But if you're here, make a comment if you come back. Give me a like, please. Appreciate that. We'll talk to you guys later. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you.